Hey, welcome back everyone to another video. So this week I want to talk about my process of making a game. How do I start making a game all the way until the end, until I release it? What does that process look like? I think my workflow is a tiny bit different from other people. I really work based on having fun and being creative. I will get back to that a bit later. So the first thing you start with is a concept or an idea. You might have something in your head, a certain mechanic or a certain type of feel for your game. And that's what you start with. So if we look at my current game, the parkour game, the concept is a platform game where you try to go through the level doing tricks and looking as stylish as possible. Next thing you look at is the scope. How big do you want this game to be? Do you want to make 10 levels? Do you want to make 30 levels? How many characters do you want? Things like that. So you might want this concept to be like a short project, like maybe six months, or this might be your next big game and it will take two or three years. And that will really determine the amount of content that you can put into the game. So the next thing you look at is, can I actually make this game? So you first look at the game design. Do I have the skills to make this? Am I any good at level design? Or maybe if you're making like an RPG or something, you have to think, can I balance all these stats out and all these attacks out? Do I have the skills to do this? Next thing is you look at the art. Do I have the artistic skills to do this? You might not be any good at 3D or you might not be any good at 2D. That really sets limits on what you can make. And then lastly you think, do I have the technical skills to do this? Can my engine support the idea that I have or do I have to make my own engine? Maybe you have like a super unique mechanic and it really requires you to make your own engine. So then once you have the concept and you know the scope, you know how big the game is gonna be and you know that you can actually make the thing, you start making a mock-up. It might be an art mock-up, just a visual representation of your concept or you might just make a prototype right away. I see a lot of people making prototypes with squares where the character is just a square and all the stage elements are just squares. Personally, I don't really like that since the visual element is so important for me. If you look at my parkour game and we just take one mechanic like the flip, using squares would really give a bad impression of that mechanic. Since flipping a square, you would really lose track of how far you are into the rotation since all the sides of the square look the same. And you might get a bad impression. I, I might start thinking, oh, this flipping mechanic is no fun at all. It's so hard to see what I'm doing. But actually using a character in the prototype gives a way better impression. When I started prototyping the flip, I put Suzy into the game immediately and it really gave me a good idea of the flip mechanic. Doing the flip felt really nice and then doing the tuck and see the character like go into a ball and rotate faster, it really gave me a good impression of the mechanic and I'm happy I didn't just use a square. So based on the prototype you might find out that your game is no fun at all and you might just discard it and move on to the next thing. Or you might think yeah this is a good thing, this is a good game, I can see this being a lot of fun. And you move on into the specifics, you start thinking about the game world, you start thinking about the lore, you might start thinking about the different levels and the different environments. And I think this is where my process starts to change from most people. So what I do is I write down all the features in the game. So that's the lore, that's all the mechanics, that's all the different stages. And I don't plan out anything, I just have all these things. Personally, I use Trello, which is a really nice website where you can put all these cards with all these different things. So I have all these cards and I don't plan anything. I don't order them or anything like that. I just start my day and I might have like a creative impulse for a stage to work on or I might just really feel like doing this specific thing and then I start working on it. Sometimes I start a day with a completely new card, uh, something might pop up in my head and I just start working on that right away. So if you watch my devlogs, you might have noticed that things are all over the place. One week I'm doing programming, then the next week I'm doing art for a stage, 
The next week I suddenly added a new character out of nowhere and that's because I work based on creativity, I work based on having fun. If I'm doing something one week and I'm not having fun anymore, I just stop and I move to the next thing. And once I feel energized to go back to the other thing, I go back and I finish it. So yeah, my process is pretty much don't plan anything, just do whatever you feel like, which really sums up my workflow. Like I wake up whenever I want to, I work whenever I want to. If I feel like working in the morning, I work in the morning. Or if I feel like working in the middle of the night, I might start working in the middle of the night. I don't think this works for a lot of people. I think it requires a lot of discipline since it's very easy to just get lazy because if I don't feel like doing anything, I will just not do anything whole day. But I always had this creeping feeling like in high school when I got homework some people just don't care, they just don't do it and I won't feel bad at all. But if I didn't do my homework, I would feel so bad, I would feel like I committed a crime or something. I really had this creeping feeling that made me do my homework and I still have that to this day. If I don't work for two days, I just start feeling so bad about myself, like I'm wasting time and I could have done all this work in the meanwhile, what the hell am I doing? So for people who are like that, I think that workflow can really work, but for most people it's just too easy to get lazy. So yeah, that's pretty much how I work, I just keep doing all these random things whenever I feel like, and at some point they're all done, and that means that the game is done, and then I will start playtesting, and eventually I will release the game, and yeah, then it's done, and all the way through I had fun making the game, when I was working a 9 to 5 job, I was always doing things I didn't like to do. Like 90% of the time I was sitting at my desk doing things I didn't want to do. But now that I went indie, I'm just having fun all the way through. Of course there's always things you can't avoid doing, like I hate doing math stuff, but I chose to make my own engine so I just cannot avoid sometimes doing stuff that I don't like. But if I'm really done with it, I really don't feel like doing it anymore, I usually move on to something else and then finish it later, when it became a bit more fun again. So yeah, that's pretty much my process of making a game. Let me know how you guys work on things, whether it's games or a piece of art or anything else you do during your job. What is your way of working? So thanks again for watching. I thought it might be interesting to hear how a solo developer who doesn't have anyone to tell him what to do works and how having complete control influences your workflow. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys again next week.